welcome, no matter what you believe and no matter what you do not believe. Welcome, no matter what you've done or what you have left undone. Welcome, no matter who you are. And of course, welcome, no matter who you love, because this is Christ Church. And this church welcomes everyone. I also want to acknowledge that I am standing on sacred ground, ground that has been sacred for thousands of years before settlers came here. Our original nations, the Aboriginals and First Nations cry out for justice, and that justice is still not here. So today we heard uh, from John 14 verses 1 to 14, a very famous passage. But before I talk about that, I want to say happy Mother's Day, but not just happy Mother's Day to those who are in happy families. Happy Mother's Day to those who are being abused emotionally or physically. Happy Mother's Day to those mothers who are in prison. Happy Mother's Day to those women who are in hospitals. Happy Mother's Day to trans women. Happy Mother's Day to every mother whoever you are, wherever you are, if you are estranged from your children or not, thank you, thank you for bringing life into this world. Thank you for your love. That truly is a ministry. But John 14, lovely, very feminine, especially in those days, passage about preparing rooms. Now we've used to hearing this at funerals. And of course, during a pandemic, we can't help but think about those who don't even get to have funerals, those who don't get to have celebrations of life. To those, a prayer, lots of love and light. So here we have Jesus preparing rooms for us and also saying something pretty controversial, saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life of no one gets to the, my father, but through me. This passage has been used to hate those of other religions. This passage has been used by the Christian right to say that the only way to the divine, the center of all creation, the creator, the source of all love, the only way to the divine is through Jesus. And of course this excludes a great deal of the world. It excludes folk from other religions. It excludes atheists. That, I want to say to you, is not a Christian way of interpreting this passage. It's not consistent with the Jesus who says, love your neighbor as yourself and doesn't qualify who that neighbor is. So let's look at it for a minute. What is Jesus really saying here? First of all, Again, a nod to the Christian right, but to every Christian, if we're going to say that Jesus embodies both the human and the divine, then we also have to say that, of course, his connection with that divine, with the Father, as he calls the divine, is intimate, it's personal, it's only his or theirs, it's only the property, if you will, of Jesus, Jesus' self. It's not anybody's, but everybody, he says, has a connection to the divine. They don't have to have his connection to the divine, which is unique. We say that as Christians. There is something unique about Jesus, something absolutely one-off about his connection with God. That's what Jesus is talking about. So the real question to us is, what is your unique connection to God? What is your unique way of interacting with the divine? What is your holy path? What is your exceptional ability to connect with that which is holy? Only you can answer that question. Only you have that connection which is, of course, profoundly Christian too. The priesthood 
of all believers. We all have a direct connection with God. We don't have to go through a priest. We don't have to go through a holy guy. We don't have to go through somebody special. It's yours and yours alone. Find it. That's what Jesus is talking about. Not excluding other faiths. In fact, when we say Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again, we're expressing exactly that. We're expressing that Christ could come back into the lives again as a Hindu, as a Sikh, as a Jew, as a Muslim, as an atheist, as someone you might know. So again, yes, Jesus' connection with the divine was unique. We acknowledge that, but so is yours. Hello everyone, I'm Charlotte and I am the Alto section lead at Trinity St. Paul's and this is James. Hi there. Um, we hope everyone is doing well, we miss you and we're thinking about you. We'd like to sing Spirit of Life, hymn number 381.
Hello, everyone. We are still here in Exeter at Carol's parents. And uh, last week, the weather was beautiful, and we were on the back porch. Uh, this week, it is cooler. So we're um, actually here in the basement. And I'm reading the scripture of the morning, which is John 14, 1 to 14. And this is uh, later in Jesus' ministry. And uh, the disciples are full of questions for Jesus. And uh, in this passage, you'll hear a few of these questions. John 14, 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. But Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. We're very happy to be here with you this morning, and we'd like to sing The Gift of Love. For all the mothers out there. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the frustrations of our minds and the desires of our hearts. Jesus, before his death, told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Yet as modern disciples, our hearts are troubled. The way ahead is unclear. Our steps toward new life are uncertain in this hoped for decline of the pandemic. Many of us still have health concerns for ourselves, our family and friends. Many face the return to workplaces without safe assurances. Others have lost jobs and economic security. Many like those in the arts community are still waiting and hoping that their vocations may be revived without permanent loss. Essential workers continue to face virus infection, low pay and questionable conditions in meat packing plants, grocery stores, hospitals, long-term care homes and shelters. Many face domestic violence and family tensions. Others are homeless and sick, waiting for solutions. Oh God, we know you suffer with us. Help us to look around and look ahead and keep our eyes on Jesus, who cared for those living in poverty, facing injustice and systemic oppression, who cared for those who were depressed, lonely and afraid. We thank you for the prophets through the ages who saw you, O God, in the sparrows, in the fields, in the rivers and trees. We thank you for the vibrant insistence of spring, of the many small gifts of nature we have often ignored. For loving hearts, small gestures of kindness, for efforts to stay connected, for the opportunity to simplify our lives and desires, to learn what is most important. We thank you for wise and cautious leaders in governments and in our church. We thank you for human and planetary cycles of turning, turning our world toward healing, health, and new life. Help us to use this time of reflection to recompose our lives, and commit to rebuilding our world in the vision of your new heaven and earth, caring for each other and earth itself, following Jesus as a source of life and truth. Forgiving God, overlook our lack of faith, our rush to know the future, our self-involvement. Help us to free ourselves from fear, to trust each day in your loving spirit, to let this loving, life-giving energy flow through us to others. Loving God, hear and speak to each of us now in a moment of silence. Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love, answer. We pray especially today for those we name now. For Merlin, Charlene, Simon, Shirley, Emily, Dan, Lois, Reverend Young Bok Kim and prayers for Hendrika's father and for Carol Radslaff Woodward's parents. And a prayer of thanksgiving for Sarah Briones Clark, who is recovering. We offer prayers as well for all in long-term care, for prisoners and essential workers, healthcare workers, grocery store clerks, migrant workers, and others we name now.
Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. We pray for Shining Waters Regional Council, of which we are a part, and the congregations of Wesley United Church, Coldwater, Malvern Emanuel Church in Scarborough, St. Matthew's United Church, Richmond Hill. Conscious of our connection with people of faith across our world, we pray with the church in Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Nepal. O Savior Christ, in whose way of life lies the secret of all life and the hopes of all the people. We pray for quiet courage to meet this hour. We did not choose to be born or to live in such an age, but let its problems challenge us. Its discoveries exhilarate us. Its injustice anger us. Its possibilities inspire us. And its vigor renew us. Amen.